How's it going crew? This is Happy Days and welcome to another episode of Easy Farms. Today we're going to look at something that's been requested quite a bit and it's to make a really basic surface halo and or crimson corruption uh, farm. And it's an AFK one, it's totally easy to set up and let's have a look at what you need to build it. Now this, the thing I love about this farm is that you can make it as basic or as advanced as you want. So what you need is just something to build with and I'm just using tungsten bricks so it's more interesting but you could build this with dirt. That's right, dirt. Now if you're in hard mode and you want to spread the corruption crimson you only need as little as one of each biome block. So say you're on a corruption world, you want a pearl stone and an even stone. If you're on a crimson world, obviously crimson, pearl stone. Okay. Uh, you'll need some traps to kill the pixies because they tend to float in the air. Now, if you've just started hard mode, you'll have dart traps available to you. And if you're later in the game, you might have some temple traps. You need a little bit of lava, not 31 like I've got. You could get away with using one bucket. That's all you need. And if you're later on, you might want to use a clentaminator to speed things up a bit. Totally up to you. Or you could use seeds too. Alright, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is just flatten out a little area that we want to get our trap started in. Now, look, if you want to count it out, you need to be have about 80 blocks each side of where you're making your farm roughly. But if you find a nice plain flat stretch in your Terraria world, and usually the purity tends to have this, I'm just going to guesstimate today. Um, but you could count it out if you really wanted to. So this hill's looking good. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is just smooth it out a little bit. So, just smoothing it all out. Very nice. It doesn't need to be perfect. Alright. And then what we're going to do is dig a little hole here. Now, how deep does it have to be? I'd probably say about, for this, this farm, I'd go about, mm, let's see, ground level, one, two... I'd say about eight. Eight blocks deep would be good. Three, four, five... Six, seven, eight. Now let's go ten. <laughs> Just to be safe. And for width, I'd probably make it about, let's see, you probably want about that. A nice wide pit. I'd probably make it about 15 blocks wide, guys. So two, four, six, seven, two, nine, nine, about 15. There we go, beautiful. I'm only counting it roughly because it's not super critical, the measurements are exact. So I'll get this all dug up and I'll remove the backdrop and we'll move on to the next part. See you soon. Okay, so we've got our nice little hole dug in the ground here and probably the only thing you need to be mindful of this trap is just make the entryways nice and even. It's probably not critical, but I don't know. I like things to look nice. Now, the next thing we need to do is make our little area underneath because our character is actually going to stand underneath the farm in this trap. So, there's a few ways you can achieve this. You can either... You can either... So if you're very early hard mode, one of your options is to actuate a long walkway that just goes around to the sides and up to the top here. So basically, you're just actuating along, and I can't reach. <laughs> I've got to dig around. You can make it nice and close, that doesn't matter. So just actuating, actuating. And you get access to actuators, that sounds like a tongue twister. Access to actuators uh, after you defeat Skeletron in uh, pre-hard mode. Because you can save the mechanic from the dungeon as soon as you've beaten Skeletron. So that's pretty cool. Now the other option, obviously, and one I probably prefer, is to use teleporters. But, you know, it really, it's up to you and where you're up to in the game. So, you know, it, this is achievable as soon as you get to hard mode. And then all you'd want to do is just put one little wire coming out here, one coming out there, and just put your switches down. And then you've got a nice little entry and exit way into your farm. Just like that. So actually, I think I'll just use this today. Why not? Why not? Let's go with the easy farm mentality. 
Okay, the last thing I'm going to do before nighttime comes is just make it look cool around the edges. I'm going to add some tungsten bricks. Um, part of the reason for this is they're non-corruptible. Um, so you can just use normal grey bricks if you don't have tungsten. And yeah, so I think, yeah, so basically you want to do it because you don't want your trap getting all corrupted and all that, all that stuff. But also, it looks nice too. So, you know, if you're going to spend some time farming in here, why not make it look cool? So I'll speed this bit up, guys. It's almost night time, so I'll come back in the morning once the sun has risen and the bloodthirsty slimes and bats and all those evil things have gone back to sleep. All right, see you soon. <laughs> I know slimes don't come out at night too. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> oh, how am I going to get around that? <laughs> oh, that's so noobish. Um, let's see. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, it works. Okay, guys, here we are. We've got the basis of our farm set up here. And as you can see, <laughs> I left a blooper in there. I used the wiring over where the lights would be, so it made a mess up. Um, so basically, all I've done is just take it a little bit wider, and it's a really easy way to get in and out of the farm. Okay, I'd like to actually get the biomes started spreading. So it's as simple as if you've only got pearlstone, you can achieve this with one block. You just put it in the ground, and if you're in hard mode, that'll spread automatically. Um, and if you have a Clentaminator, which means if you've beaten one mech boss, you can get the Steampunker. It does speed things up considerably because you can literally just spray away. So I guess I'm showing you both options because if you plant a few blocks early on, um, yeah, you'll get it started well in advance. So I'll just spread a bit. You could put some bricks there if you wanted to stop it spreading. That's up to you. And I don't really like Crimson much, so let's put Corruption on the other side. Okay, so let's spray some Corruption. Very fun and happy. Yes, making the world yucky. Beautiful. Okay, now we've got our biome spread. We're actually going to set up the last few parts of the farm. Now, there's a trick you can do with lava where you can funnel the mobs in so it's nice and tight, but not have the lava burning all the items to death. And basically all you do is you leave one block high and then keep building around where you want the mobs to go. So what will happen is when we put the lava down, it gets to spread out nice and wide, but it's not wide enough where the mobs can get underneath. Um, and then we're actually going to fill this, this block in here and this part in here. And if you are really feeling creative, you might even hellify this one and crimson, uh, I mean corruption, that one. Which, now that I've said it, I kind of want to do it. So, I'm going to have a play around making this pretty, and then we'll move on to the last step. <laughs> See you soon. Okay, guys, here we are. It's a bright new day, and there's mobs going around everywhere, which is always a good sign of a good trap. So, what we're going to do is counter the unicorns and the corruptors now. Unicorns tend to jump over farms that are narrow like this. So what we're going to do is actually make a little one block that's going to block it. So we're going to build four blocks across, three, four, and then eight into the air. Five, six, seven, eight. And then we're actually going to remove everything. And what that'll do is when the unicorn runs up, it'll hit that and fall into the trap. Now, conversely, corruptors tend to fly down onto the traps. So we also need to actuate this block and put it on a timer. So half the time it will block unicorns and the other half of the time it will let the, uh, what are we talking about? The corruptors through. So it's all good though because we can also make this double as our dart firing system. So we've got that actuated. That'll alternate while we're fighting all the mobs. 
So, next part is putting some traps into this. Okay, last thing I'm going to do is add a few dart traps to this. And I'm only going to use normal dart traps because firstly, pixies don't have very high hit points. And secondly, I guess I, I'm showing that this is achievable earlier on in the game. Um, now, obviously, if you are later on, you are more than welcome to use more advanced traps. Um, but I'm just going to go with these. So three this side, three that side, and they'll cover all the line of fire nicely. And I'm going to hook them up to separate timers. So we'll put blue onto one timer, and we'll put uh, the green onto another one. So let's put that in there, and just go into our farm. Let's see, and I'm just going to use three second timers for this. So let's... Boom, boom. Cool. Now what you can do with your activation is count slightly apart. So I'm going to go activate that one, two, and then turn the other one on. And what you'll get is a more consistent coverage of fire because I don't actually want to be using my summons during this. So you can also see that the block up the top will be on for about three seconds, then it'll turn off for three. So it gives a chance for corruptors to get in, but also to block unicorns. And you can see over time it'll be killing the pixies too. And that'll just help. It'll hit the lava occasionally, but the rest of the time the darts will hit it. Alright, let's add some lava in. And really get the damage in this trap turned up. And we're almost there, guys. Ah, yeah, that's working nicely. Okay, guys. Last thing I want to do, just to maximize spawn rates. And I know I said you didn't have to do this, but... Uh, it can actually influence the spawn rates and that's just take a few moments to even out the runway up to your farm So basically it's as simple as just getting some dirt blocks and running along digging up the trees and I'll be replanting mine because I want it to look like a nice little farm um, And it can make a difference I suppose if you are farming over an hour and your spawn rates like you know 20% lower because it the mobs tend to catch on corners, especially flying ones. They'll hit a corner and then they tend to fly back away for a bit. So it is definitely worth it. If you're, you know, if you want maximum efficiency out of your farm. If you don't care and you're just going to watch a movie while you're farming, then hey, don't worry about this step. Just uh, go as usual. So as you can see, I've got this nice and flat. You don't have to go all the way and then you might just want to as long as you hammer the block so it's sloped, you should be fine. Another thing I'd get rid of is something like that. That's just going to catch mobs. Same as this little bit. And I'll just hammer this side here. There we go, that's looking nice now, so it's nice and smooth for them to get back. Alrighty, I'm going to set one last thing up, and this is optional for those of you that really like to push your farms as far as they can go is I'm going to add a little jungle biome in here. Just a mini one, because jungle biomes can influence the spawn rates on traps by quite a bit. And as long as the blocks aren't exposed, uh, it won't actually spawn jungle mobs, or it shouldn't. <laughs> so, let's get this all happening. So I'm going to clear this up. So basically, all you need for a mini jungle biome is 80 blocks of space and jungle vines actually count towards it too which is pretty interesting five six seven so we're just going to make I'd recommend going about mm, 12 blocks across perhaps so seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and then twelve so you need eighty so what's five twelve sixty seven blocks down yeah let's go about oh we won't even need to go that guys you don't actually need to go too far because what we're actually going to do is this little trick where you can have multiple platforms. So, yeah, it should be alright. Alrighty, so let's... Yeah, maybe go... You know, you need to go a few down. Maybe go ten blocks down. Okay guys, it's the night time has come and uh, I can hear the jungle music playing from our little jungle trap. So I want to give this farm a test now. 
So we're going to jump inside. All nice and safe. Let's get our traps on. One, two, just separating those. And look, there will be wraiths spawning. And sometimes the, I'm not sure what they're called, the big corruption blobs, when they spawn, uh, the little slimes can fall into the box. So just having a few summons in, uh, you could sit in a honey bar. Uh, it's up to you how you want to deal with that, but um, there's plenty of ways you can. So we're just going to chill out for a bit and let this farm do its thing. And let's see what sort of loot we get. Um, <laughs> a jungle key mold already dropped because of the jungle. Um, as you can see, the unicorns are falling in. Uh, the corruptors will f fly in eventually. We just have to get it where the block's actuated. Oh, and you can see those little slimes dropped in then. You can see a wraith coming along, but our ravens will deal with it. Um, early hard mode, you could use pirates. Uh, you could be using the hornets or a slime stuff if you've got one. So, I'm going to let this farm for a full Terraria day and let's see what loot we get. Okay guys, so here we are, we've been running our farm for a while and let's take a look at the loot chest and see what we got. So one thing I love straight away is it get, it's pretty good for accessories. So we got the megaphone, blindfold, fast clock and the vitamins from the corruptors. <laughs> a cool thing is we got the unicorn on a stick which is a 1% drop from unicorns and it's just a vanity fun item but it's kind of cool <laughs> and it's something you can easily miss in Terraria Oh, we just got more vitamins uh, we got the ancient shadow set which is pretty cool it's just like normal shadow armor tons of pixie dust for making potions got plenty of rotten chunks I got about two stacks of that um, yeah got some unicorn horns uh, one worm spawned by the looks of it so I got some cursed flames and plenty of banners. So all in all, I'm uh, pretty happy with that, guys. That was uh, a nice haul and a pretty easy to set up farm because I know I've gone to the effort of making it look all pretty full, but uh, this is literally just a hole in the ground, bit of lava and some blocks blocking up half of it, a couple of traps and a few timers. Done. Boom. Done. Alrighty, everyone. Thanks as always for watching another episode of Easy Farms. And don't forget to keep letting me know in the comments what you'd like to see me make a farm of next. Alright, time for some shout outs. We've got SJ6Gaming.bl has asked me to see cruel crunchy cookies. Goodness, maybe they were like too crunchy or something. Okay, we've got I Love Orange86 has asked me to say in an evil voice, cupcakes. <laughs> cupcakes, evil cupcakes. Oh! We've got Yormies asked me to say, Pad Kid Pod Curd Pulled Cold. Oh, that's a tough one. Pad Kid Pod Curd Pulled. Oh, no, that's a, that's a tricky one. We've got Josh Plays Terraria's asked me to see, Get to the Chopper Now. Uh, Ryan Doyle's asked me to say, 20,000 subscribers. Well, we're going to need more cookies. Jimmy, bring them in. And then Serena's like, oh, Happy, it's getting lonely around here. And that's kind of funny because we've got Serena fishing here. Does that mean the Serena episode's coming out? Possibly the finale. Oh my gosh. We've got prismite fish falling on the ground. Uh, we've got Ali bin Hussein's asked me to say shadow clone jutsu. Rasengan. Um, and I am a huge Naruto fan. I love it. I love it. I love it. Naruto's awesome. Okay. And last one. We've got Paige Decker. Paige? Paige Decker has asked me to say, Cookie Monster said, I love milk, not cookies. <laughs> Alright guys, leave a like if you've enjoyed this. It makes me happy when you, you know, take the time to click that little thumbs up. Uh, comments, as I said, let me know what you want to see next time we do an easy farm. And subscribe if you haven't yet. We're about to do our 20,000 subscriber special. I'm totally pumped for it. I was so excited I pulled the fishing rod out early. Alright, as always, stay happy and I'll see you next time. This is Happy Days. Signing out. <laughs> See ya. And that means that ectoplasm will be, yeah, getting farmed nicely. And you can see that was dead easy to set up that. So the mobs can cruise up the sides. 
The mimics can get in, which is one of the main things. Yeah, we've got lots of good loot. Just, just oh, he's got three thousand health. He's only got three thousand.